What's up everybody, we're back on the Shadowlands beta and today we'll be taking a look at the new and improved Blood DK. I'll be going over what's new, what's old, the new covenant systems and overall feel of this spec and its gameplay. I will also insert the standard this is beta disclaimer. This is beta, so tuning can and will change, talents can change, covenant stuff can change, pretty much most things can change. And lastly, a lot of this will be my personal opinion, so do with that what you will. With that out of the way, let's start off with what's new. Playstyle wise, not a ton has changed, we've just been given more flavor if you will. Some talent changes, some ability nerfs and buffs, and a ton of unpruning due to Blizzard's recent hit on the nostalgia pipe. So the first big thing for DKs across the board is the addition of new rune forges. The ones that impact us as blood are as following. Rune of Hysteria increases your max runic power by 20 and your attacks have a chance to increase runic power generation by 20%. Rune of Sanguination causes your death strike to deal increased damage based on the target's missing health. Roughly 1% per 1% missing health. It also heals you for 48% of your max age HP over 8 seconds when you drop below 35% health, and that's on a 5 minute cooldown. Rune of Spell Warding deflects 3% of all spell damage and a chance to create a shield equal to 10% of your max HP that absorbs magical damage. When an enemy damages this shield, their cast speed is reduced by 10% for 6 seconds. And Rune of Unending Thirst grants you 10% haste and movement speed and heals you for 5% of your max HP when you defeat a target that yields experience or honor. You also run 10% faster when you're dead. These are all very much subject to tuning, but it adds more flavor to DK's overall, and it's something we've kinda needed for ages. Not that they do anything remarkably impactful or broken, but it's been a bit weird just having the same rune forges forever. I've been playing around a lot with the Hysteria rune, which is incredibly nice gameplay-wise. You get more runic power, which means you can bank more death strikes, and it also helps you not be completely dry for following a bone storm. An increased runic power generation just speeds up the overall rotation, so I'm really liking that one. Sanguination might see some uses on bosses with extended periods of uh, execute, since the big value from it is on low HP target, and if there's ever a very very magic heavy fight, spell warding might see some uses, but I kinda doubt it with its current tuning at least. Unending Thirst might be nice while you're leveling or world questing if you can be bothered to keep swapping your runeforge. On to the new slash old front. Anti-Magic Zone, Lichborn and Death Coil, Race Dead and Sacrificial Pact, Chains of Ice, Rune Tap is baseline and Blood Tap is back. Anti-Magic Zone, 2 minute cooldown, lasts for 10 seconds, reduces spell damage taken by party or raid members within it by 20%. Crazy stuff right there. Great to have a raid cooldown again and such an iconic spell at that. Lichborn on a 2 minute cooldown, lasts for 10 seconds, increases Leech by 10 10% and immunity to charm, fear and sleep. The immunity part alone will be amazing for certain raid encounters as well as for a lot of mobs and bosses in dungeons. And the added 10% leech is really nice for dungeons as well as an added layer of healing. Can also be used in conjunction with death coil once again if you need a bit of a healing when you're not in range to death strike. Race dead, 2 minute cooldown, race a ghoul that smacks a target lasts for 1 minute but the real power comes from blowing the poor ghoul to pieces with Sacrificial Pact, which is also on a 2 minute cooldown. Blow up your ghoul, deal damage to up to 8 nearby enemies and heals you for 25% of your max HP. So an extra oh sh button that deals a bit of damage. Shanes of Ice is back for blood again, costs 1 rune, slows a target's movement speed by 70%, incredibly strong ranged single target slow. And like I said, rune tap is now a baseline instead of a talent, but it has been nerfed a bit. Still costs 1 rune, but now reduces damage taken by 20% down from 30%, making it a lot less valuable. There will be moments where this is extremely valuable though, if there's fights where your healing is reduced or where you can't heal, or if you're out of range and can't death strike during some abilities or to reduce extreme spikes. However, in most cases you'll be better off spending runes to get runic power and just heal through the damage, but I'd rather have it and not need it than the other. 
other way around. Lastly, Blood Tap is back. One man recharge time, two charges, generates one rune. Recharge time is reduced by two seconds whenever a bone shield is consumed. So it just helps speed up our rotation a bit, which is very nice. Other than that, Bone Shield has been buffed a bit, 10% more armor than it had in BFA, which, I mean, is always nice. All in all, I welcome most of these changes, just more things to press, more utility and more control overall, which is great, and the overall gameplay and rotation feels a bit faster with Blood Tap and the new Rune of Hysteria, and a bit less haste dependent to make it feel smooth. Now with that done, let's check out the talent changes, again, nothing major here a few swaps and some buffs. First row, Rune Strike is gone and has been replaced by Tombstone, which used to be in the third row. And just like Rune Strike, Tombstone doesn't look like it will be a contender on this row either. Second row stays the same as in BFA, but Rapid Decomposition has been buffed, with the addition that Blood Plague leeches 50% more life. Previously, it was just that the disease in D&D deals damage more often. Third row, new thing here is Relish in Blood instead of Tombstone. While Crimson Scourge is active, which is the free D&D proc, your next D&D heals you for X amount per bone shield charge, and you get 10 runic power. Some extra healing and runic power, but against Ossuary it probably won't see much use if any, which is why for the hundredth time Ossuary should be baseline. And the number four row new thing here is that since Rune Tap is baseline, Mark of Blood has been moved here instead. Mark of Blood has also been buffed by 1% and no longer costs runic power, so it might actually see some more use now, at least in raids. Fifth row, nothing new. Sixth row, with Mark of Blood moving away to the fourth row, Death Pact has now been added as a talent. Two minute cooldown heals you for 50% of your max HP, but absorbs 30% of your max health as healing. And this is a weird one since 50% sounds like a lot, but adding in that you have to heal away a 30% absorb means you effectively only gain 20%. Sure, it might save you, but adds issues following it. And comparing it to blood worms that heals you for 15% of your missing health when you drop below 50%, and you can have like three and four of them up at the same time, then death pack starts looking a little less awesome, but might see some use. On top of this though, Voracious has been buffed as well. On top of the 15% leech for 8 seconds follow a death strike, its healing is increased by 20% as well, making this a very strong contender for pure survival. And having that 15% leech and popping Lichborn? So much leech! Leechborn! For the last row, Red Thirst has been buffed a bit, reduces Vamp Blood's cooldown by 1.5 sec per 10 runic power, up from 1 sec. And that's pretty much it so far for the talents. All in all, pretty boring to be honest. Sure, the buffs are really nice, but overall it doesn't look like it will change our standard picks too much, and doesn't really change or add to anything, just more of the same. Now, with that said, let's hop on to the fun parts, which is the Covenants. Starting off with Venthyr, Swarming Mist and Door of Shadows. Swarming Mist, on a 1 minute cooldown, a heavy mist surrounds you for 8 seconds, increasing your dodge by 10% and deals a ton of damage each sec to enemies within 10 yards. Anytime it deals damage, you gain 3 runic power, up to a maximum of 15. That's a ton of runic power when you're in a multi-target encounter or dungeon environment, plus it lines up perfectly with Bone Storm, just saying. And that's really where it shines, in dungeons, uh, maybe a few raid encounters where there's adds. But playing it in a dungeon feels really, really strong at the moment, hopping into a pack, popping this and being able to pop off a full stacked bone storm real quick. And even without bone storm it just gives you so much runic power to pump out death strikes on big pulls to sustain you, and the added dodge isn't too shabby either. And seeing as it's on a 1 minute cooldown you'll be having this up for almost any pack you hop into, at least in M+. It's just a ton of added damage and survival, great for added threat and to fuel your bone storms or death strikes. 
strikes. However, on single target it shines a lot less bright. Does some damage, gives you like half a death strike over 8 seconds and a little dodge. So much, much less impactful, which is a shame. And sure, this is leaving out conduits and soul binds, which will make the Venther choice more worthwhile, or probably at least. And I say probably because they're not done yet, at least not tuning. But looking at the ability alone that Venther offers in a single target versus AoE perspective goes to show the difference between them. And this is kind of where I struggle with this system as a whole. Feeling like something is super fun and good in one aspect and an absolute yeah in another one. And sure, there's a lot of things that work like that in World of Warcraft that's awesome for something and less so for other. Only difference is that I can easily swap those, mostly at least. But like I said, for dungeons or AoE, this is super fun. It's an awesome ability which I had a lot of fun with trying out. It's just sad that it's pretty much eh at best for single target. Then there's the Door of Shadows. One min cooldown, 35 yard range teleport for any class and spec. The uses are endless. Sure, it has a cast time, but it's like 1.5 sec, so yes, it's not a panic blink like mages, but there's still a lot that can be done with this, avoiding mechanics and to some extent as a panic get out button. Plus the animation is dope. Not much more to say about this, but as a DK I can pretend that I have a charge, which is something I've always wanted, even if it has cast time. On to the Night Fade, Death's Dew and Soul Shape. Death's Dew replaces Death and Decay, same cooldown, same damage, but has this added bonus. Enemies damaged by this deal 1% reduced damage to you up to 15% and their power is transferred to you as an equal amount of strength so 15% and you pretty much have 100% uptime on this. I hope they don't nerf it but I assume that it will get a tuning pass. 15% damage reduction on every target hit by your D&D sure takes a few ticks for it to stack up but it goes very fast to be honest. Then add in 15% more strength which is just more damage, more healing, more armor, it's just a crazy amount of survival, all neatly packed into one of the best looking on ground effects to date. The visual is just stunning. The only down part of this, gameplay wise, is that it's just not fun. It's not fun to press. Your damage doesn't skyrocket, it's not a crazy cooldown you use since it has 100% uptime. It's just there, looks very good, but that's it. On the plus side, it's extremely good for both AoE and single target. Strength increase and damage reduction is awesome for both. And since you have D&D up pretty much all the time and the buff slash debuff refreshes on each tick, you will have it up on everything, which is really nice. Only thing I want gameplay wise is for it to do something more. I get why it doesn't, because that would make it even more insane than it already is. It's just that it's boring. But that's my opinion, other people might be more than fine just looking at that crazy animation. Now for Soul Shape, Night Face Signature Ability, Soul Shape is on a 1.5 minute cooldown, turns you into a Vulpin, teleporting you 15 yards forward, then increases your movement speed by 50%. And you may reactivate this every few secs to teleport again. Last 12 seconds or indefinitely while in a rested area. This one I'm beyond hyped for as a slow, slow tank. A nice sprint that lasts for 12 seconds with a mini blink that you can use multiple times. What's not to like? Where was this anytime I wiped in? King's Rest as a DK. I, I mean, I've never wiped in a key. To top it off, currently there's a lot of spells that are castable while in this form, like D&D, Blood Boil, and if I'm not mistaken, Marrow Rend as well. So you can pop into this form, gather up some packs and still keep aggro so they don't go smack your healer, or that greedy, greedy DPS that just can't wait for the tank to pull stuff together. So all in all, great ability for a Blood DK. And if tuning stays as it is for Death's Due replacement of D&D that you get as a Night Fae plus Soul Shape, it's just looking so, so good for Blood DK. But again, tuning, tuning. Next out is Necro Lord. Abomination Limb and Fleshcraft. So let's talk Abomination Limb. This, this right here is a very fun button to press. Looks amazing as well. Two minute cooldown, sprout an additional limb for 12 seconds. Every second it deals shadow damage to all nearby enemies and pulls an enemy to you if they are further than eight yards from you. So effectively a mini Ursul's vortex centered around you. And it's just so much fun to play with. Running around, seeing that extra arm reach out and yoink mobs 
forwards you. Fun aspect aside, it deals a fair amount of damage on AoE as well as help out with gathering mobs up. So you can use this to group up annoying packs, get those casters in, keep charging or leaping mobs in check or to drag a few casters to a new location with you. Since the vortex follows your, well, the extra limb is on you. I also assume it will be hilarious in PvP as well. Sadly, it goes the way of the Venthyr swarming mist when it comes to single target. It deals a decent amount of damage, but that's it. Sadly, you can't grip around bosses with it. I'd love for that to be a thing, but alas it's not. So this again feels a lot more like a dungeon slash PvP type of ability. Would have been nice with something like if your extra limb does not or cannot pull anything in, its damage is increased by X. Or if you cannot pull something, the extra limb defends you, reducing your damage taken, blah blah, or something like that. I don't know, I'm not a game designer. But if you've always wanted more grips as a DK, more limbs as a DK, then look no further. And for the signature ability, you get flesh craft, 2 minute cooldown, 4 second channel, which you cannot dodge or parry during. Absorbs damage equal to 20% of your max HP for 2 minutes or an absorbed shield. Channeling near corpses claim their essences to grow the shield up to 50% of your max HP. The stronger the mob, the bigger the gain. A potentially huge absorb, at least with mobs around you. A bit annoying that it's on a 4 second channel, but in most raid fights and dungeons there will be moments to channel this. Between packs or when you're not actively tanking. And there are a lot of soul binds that power fleshcraft as well, like getting buffs from mobs you craft. Each buff currently lasts for 6 minutes and gives you stuff like increased percentages of secondary stats and they all stack, to name just one. But a lot of things tie into the fleshcraft. Lastly, we have Kyrian, which gives you Shackle the Unworthy and Summon Steward. Shackle the Unworthy, 1 minute cooldown, reduce a target's damage dealt to you by 5% and deals a decent amount of damage over 14 seconds. Rune spending attacks during this reduces its cooldown by 4 seconds. After testing this, I'm going to say this will get changed. If not, I'm at a loss. I try to always find good things about everything, but comparing this to the other covenants, it just seems so undertuned. First of all, it's pure single target, and it needs a bit of setup to get the most out of it, because the more rune spending attacks you use during it, the faster it goes off cooldown, you want to pop it then spam away to use it more often. And that doesn't always tie into the blood DK playstyle. Then we add on to the fact that it's a 5% damage reduction compared to Night Face 15% plus 15% strength with 100% uptime. Granted I think Night Face ability will be nerfed, but even if it increases your damage reduction and strength by 5%, it's still miles ahead due to being a Wii and 100% uptime. That being said, I do do like the idea behind it, spending runes to lower cooldown to fuel it more often. It just doesn't feel good for blood. Might be different for frost or unholy but I can't say much about that. There is currently a conduit that makes this one cleave, but that conduit doesn't make it cleave always. It's like 2% chance when it deals damage and at max rank it's 10%. So even when you max that one, there's only a 10% chance for it to spread. So with that said, I'll be shocked if this ability doesn't get changed or drastically buffed. Now for the signature ability, you get Summon Steward, the Swolkin on a five minute cooldown. This little fella gives you free vials of serenity that restores 15% HP, removes all curse, disease, poison, and bleed effects on use. Separate cooldown from health stone, health pot, so pretty much an extra oh button that also removes a lot of nasty debuffs. Throughout raid testing it seemed to remove a lot of the bosses bleeds and mechanics as well. Could change before this goes live, but seeing as they're really pushing the covenant system and this being one of the signature spells, I don't think they will, but we'll see. Other than that it also gives you access to a vendors, you can sell items, an option to change talents without a tome, and you can tell one of your friends that they're awesome, which is probably the best part. So, final thoughts on the Blood DK going into Shadowlands in its current form. A lot of new and old stuff added to our toolkit, which I welcome with open limbs, abomination or otherwise. The overall gameplay feels pretty much BFA, but 
better. There's not a huge difference, they just feel stronger. Stronger toolkit, more survival, and a bit faster paced rotation with the new rune forge and blood tap. There are things I would like for them to change, I would have liked to see new things that impact the gameplay a bit more, and I would have liked some way to get bone shield up before a pull. Yes, there are workarounds, and the addition of rune tap being baseline solved some of it, but can we have both? Either way, blood DK is looking hella strong, and there's still a ton of fun to play, even more so now that our good old toolkit has gotten a lot grander. With that said, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, it really helps me out, and ring that notification bell. Don't forget to check out my Patreon where you can get access to my stanky Discord. I'll also start streaming soon on Twitch, so make sure to check me out there, there will be lots of beta testing as well as retail rating on Mondays. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.